Hello. In this video, I will be giving a highlight of how you can use ClassKick in a mathematics classroom. I use it throughout my lessons in most days that I am teaching. I use it for warm ups, practice. I've given choice board assignments and very easily can distribute and collect all of students' work on choice board assignments through ClassKick. And I've also assessed in ClassKick as well. Taking a look at a few examples of how I've chosen to give warm ups through class kick and a warm up is basically a bell ringer when students start a class and I need to check homework check attendance take care of other um, beginning of the class expectations i'm able to have students not waste time and complete um, a problem that is either a, re a review or works on what we are currently doing in class, so you can see here. I had two problems for my honors algebra two class one day I had just a very basic systems of equations problem gave them some workspace and then gave them a place for them to type their answers in um, on the second here um, I had a piecewise function that I wanted them to graph. And in this case, because they couldn't just type in their answer to check, I actually had the answer here for them to check. And I put in a manipulative with that answer covered up. That way, when they were done, they could very easily move it. They're not waiting for me to check their answer. You can see here that I have, I can do a very quick check where these answers have gone green for the first slide. That is where I had them typing in their answers to check. Okay, and where they've gone green, they got it correct. Some students didn't finish it. I had a few students who skipped the first problem altogether. And I also had some students who were just absent that day or may have come in late for various reasons. On the second one, um, I can see their graphing and obviously they're not online completing this now, but I would be able to see them as they were graphing this and then they could easily check um, and I could check in with them as well. I've definitely before gone in if I see a student completing something incorrectly, I can type them a message of there should be no dashed lines for these. We are graphing functions, not inequalities. I could also choose to highlight something that is correct or incorrect. I could give them a sticker. Um, saying good job. I could, I've created some stickers using Bitmojis. Also say close, try again, or if they're in the process of working on it, um, just so they know that I know that I'm checking in. I have a keep up the good work. What you're doing is working well. Um, so again, just for some warm ups, that way time isn't being wasted and they're getting some important quality work done in the beginning of class. Uh, I also have taken problems, not problems, activities that previously would have taken me time to go through, make sets of, cut out, give each of these students a problem. And instead, I've um, been able to make those drag and drop problems using manipulatives in class kick. So here there are just some basic properties of exponents problems. I have all the problems here and I've directed them to drag the answers onto whatever um, the correct problem was. So for example, here I had gone through in the beginning and showed them, reminded them that when they're dividing the same base, subtract the exponent. So that should be n to the fourth. And then they can go through and individually do their problems. And for this, I did not have an answer key available. So instead, what I chose to have them do was I watched them. I clicked on the, just so I could see all the slides here. And then as they went through and got them done, uh, the little stars I gave them as I was checking them individually, you can see I gave a student a uh, keep going so far so good when I checked in and other students who I did an overall check in with um, at the end when they were done and they're indicated to raise their hand when they want to be checked. I let them know if they were correct or incorrect. You can see I have some that were highlighted. Uh, those were ones when I initially checked in with a student I highlighted to let them know that there was a mistake just again so they got a quick check in. Um, you can also see here. This student um, probably was delayed in getting started, so I have a sticker of a hi, let me know if you need any help again just a way to check in let them know that they are being monitored and i'm here to help um, should they need help getting started, um, so this is another great way to use class kick um, using different activities that you probably already have, but if you're like me you have to 
cut out a set each year, cut up different things. You're using class time to have kids cut things out. And instead of having to do that, you make this assignment once and then you can use it each year with your students. I use practice assignments in various ways. I've done it in an I do, you do format where I show an example. Um, students watch me as I go through and do the problem from start to finish. And then I give them one that they have to do. And when they are going through and trying it, again, so slide two was a you do problem. I can say, okay, I'm gonna watch slide two. And then I give them feedback as they go. Um, in this case, I probably had, let's see, some students who didn't start it, got stuck. Um, you can see I was checking in with some students or they just ran out of time. Okay, um, as I went later and did more of these, I did add in uh, a chance for them to check their answer by typing their answer in. Um, here, I've also created a practice assignment that I actually put some notes directly on the practice assignment that way, and they can uh, check their answer by typing. But that way, if they need to reference back to anything uh, or previous notes, instead of them having to dig their notes out or bring up another screen that has their notes. I have notes directly on here for them. So that way they can reference those as they're going through and doing the practice assignment. And then they do their work. And again, they can type to check their answer. And you can see here, I'm able to see, okay, this student got this one wrong. I typed something to him or her. If you write down your work or add photos, I can see where you're going wrong. Um, and here I was able to highlight where a, a student went wrong and where they needed to end up um, maybe fixing something. Now for this one, you can see I actually checked it off for them in the box I had, and that's one thing you need to very be, uh, be very aware of. You can see here, I only had the decimal version, okay? And I did tell them if your answer ends up as a fraction, divide to get the decimal equivalent. Um, that student had not actually divided. And when they typed in their fraction, it was showing up as wrong. So in the future, I could choose to actually type in the fractional equivalent here as well. Um, but I had just wanted to let that student know, even though it was marked wrong for them, technically their answer was correct, even though they weren't expressing it in the desired format. Um, I've been very easily able to just take documents, again, that I had before, some different activities. You put them right in. My work you can see there was one I did to get them started. And then I wrote them a few notes, right? When you see um, a quantity squared, it means they have to write it twice and then FOIL, and then they can go through and do the assignment. So I've had problem trails, again, another drag and drop opportunity, something that I would have needed to previously cut out sets for, I now can interact with it. I'm able to go through, and I did this live where I showed them some work and then leave it for them to continue the rest. And then all of the um, answer choices are down here. They can drag them. They would then know the next problem to go through and do. Um, and it's also a way for them to self-check since if they can't find their answer, they would know that their answer is wrong. And I think I've shown you then, oh, here. In this, we were going through piecewise functions with my honors class, and there was a mixture of different types of problems here um, where they could write out and then type their answers to check. Another one where they could type their answer to check. Instant feedback is obviously very, very important for any class, um, but if you were teaching remotely this year, I'm sure you saw that as well. Um, here, obviously they can't type their answers to check, but I had the graphs hidden so they could check their answers. And then the same idea for these as well. The graphs were hidden. They could check their answers. You could see um, I had made a mistake. And instead of me going through and redoing the whole thing, I even wrote that that should be open. That way they knew if they had an open circle there, that would be correct. And then some answers that they could just check here as well. And again, checking in on student work, I'm able to very easily for the answers that they could type, see if students were correct or incorrect. And then also, if I wanted to just say focus on slide three, I could just focus on slide three here, look to see like, okay, my brave bear over here, I'm going to need to check in with him or her. Um, same thing with my determined dog. And if I see a lot of people making the same mistake, obviously I can just stop the class and go over that. Or if this had been a homework assignment, um, I would know what to go over with students at the beginning of class since I'm able to see their work in real time. 
I've created choice board assignments for students, and um, I love that I'm able to link each of the choices for students. You could see here for my one class, I had an exponents choice board, and three of the six choices were in class kick. So I created a choice board assignment. I closed, posted it in Google Classroom, and then instead of having to give them paper, I was able to just link each of these three selections there for them. Some, uh, I wanted to just give them a worksheet opportunity because so the students just still like just plain old worksheets. I had a maze that they could choose from and then another drag and drop assignment where they could write out their work and then all of the choices are here. And I even added some extra choices um, so they would know that in this case, there were more answers than there were questions. So they had to really work carefully here to um, be able to find the right answer. I have also used this for assessments. Okay, and here's one example of an assessment. It was just a short quiz. I'm able to see students work. I'm very easily on my iPad able to go through and grade their work. Um, and it grades it for me, which is fantastic. When you put in the work up front to have them type in the correct answer, I know my dazzling duck here had a 100. Okay, so I didn't even need to go through and worry about checking the answers that were right. The ones that are red, that just has me focus on going through and checking the answers that are wrong. I'm then able to give some partial credit, um, obviously, if need be. And you can see here, my radiant rabbit, ra radiant rabbit got some partial credit um, as well. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, just a few different ways that you can use class kick in the mathematics classroom. I feel like I find new ways all the time. Uh, so hopefully you will find this useful and you will be able to use it su successfully to help your students learn math and uh, do practice and warm ups and assessments in your mathematics classroom.